on this week's Most Craved. We've got our spoiler review of Batman v Superman. And we got Max Landis. I was tricked. Hey guys, welcome to Most Craved. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. I'm Silas Lesnick with ComingSoon.net. And I'm William Bibiani with Crave Online, and we are here with Max Landis, one of the highest paid and most prolific screenwriters in the industry. So well done, sir. Hello, I'm Max Landis. I review for Birth Movies Death, and I've been working really hard. I want to join the AV club. <laughs> That's my job. Do you actually review for Birth Movies nope. Death? No, but what if I did? I <laughs> what a crazy world that would be. It wouldn't surprise me. You, you do reviews, though. You do reviews on your on YouTube. I, uh, I, re I, re I respond to things. I, I never do a thematic review of a film. I, I try to just respond to elements in films that are striking to me. Yeah. I mean, like, and I almost, I, I, if I see a movie I love, like I recently saw Cretia and City of Gold, uh, Midnight Special, uh, I, 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 I'll tweet about it, but I think I get a rep for, because my tweets about movies I love are less eloquent and fervent than my tweets about movies I, I don't love as much, uh, I, I think I'm thought of as like a, a pan reviewer. Yeah. Like Max Landis, what, is, what shit is he going to say about that movie? Yeah. Well, we might find out because later we're going to be talking about Batman v Superman. I was tricked. Yeah, but <laughs> what we do want to talk about first is you got you got like a bunch of new movies. Like you got uh, your your directorial debut is still available. It, on it iTunes will be and available Amazon. in perpetuity, and then in yeah. four months on Netflix. I'm amazed at how many people like that movie. Are you really? Yeah, I mean, I, I I like it, but I didn't expect to get so many tweets from people like being like they love it. It's weird when you direct a movie, you care way less about people's opinions of it. Huh. I, I assume... That explains so much. I assume... <laughs> no, when you're like the writer of the movie, you're like, when people shit on your movie, you're like, yeah, but I don't, don't shit on me. Because I, first, even if you like the movie, you're like, I wasn't responsible for that thing that you're making fun of. Yeah. I wasn't responsible for the tone and the editing and the acting choices or the cuts they did to the script. And me and her, it was like... And, and you know, you're, you get very defensive, or I do, as, as a writer. But then... For me and her, I don't give a fuck if you don't like it. I like it. And it's because I spent hundreds of hours making that movie. Yeah. Sitting and editing and writing it and, you know, being on set till 5 a.m. and bad weather conditions and things falling apart and people getting injured and, you know, this person got sick, now we have to move all these scenes. Like, you, you end up with something that's so personally close to you that it's like, it's less like a job and it's more like your kid. Yeah. If someone like gave a bad review of your kid, you'd be like, "I love my kid. I don't care what someone I've never met thinks of my kid." Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I love me and her. Yeah. I, but I, that what a tangent. <laughs> You guys have to control me because I <laughs> got a last. Well, wait. Gonna do, you, yeah. but do you like? Do you like the the whole writing? Stressful as it is, the whole writing process more. Or do you actually like the directing and being able to go? Okay, I did some of that, but not all of that. I uh. I think you just fulfilled the dream of about a million people. But, you did uh, a whole video of punching. Yeah, it's true. I've been hit in the face so many times. <laughs> I, uh, I, and I will be next. Uh, I, uh, do you know that day on the slap? I got slapped in the face upwards of 100 times, but mm -hmm. we only used the 37 because they were the clearest. Yeah. A guy, uh, my, one of my best friends, open palm slapped me as hard as he could. Because I kept saying harder. Well, yeah, that's kind of your fault. <laughs> and I went deaf in this ear yeah. oh, for 10 minutes. Okay. And So we're not going to see the slap two anytime soon. Well, what would it even, you know, the, the slap? Nuts. The nuts. The nuts. <laughs> People getting kicked in the nuts. That's not a bad, no. That I would mean. sell. <laughs> and and I, the, I do it cross gender, so it's yeah. girls getting uh, badge go. kick too. Nice. <laughs> that's the title of the, of the video, Badge Kick And you, you delightfully sidestepped the question because what we were wondering was, do you prefer just writing or do you prefer like show running and directing I, at this point? Show running has been the most exhausting and intense yeah. and uh, intellectual experience of my life. It's uh, a level of organ. It's a real job. It's a really real job. Yeah. Um, writing is the central passion of my life and I love it more than anything else. And so it's never really been that stressful for me. Certain rewrites have been stressful. Mm -hmm. um, directing was fun and interesting. 
And the main thing I learned about directing is that literally the only way to get better at doing it is to do it more. Because what directing is is so uh, ephemeral. It, it, it's, sort of, it, it's from moment to moment what a director is changes fundamentally. You need to have people skills. You need to have visual skills. You need to have storytelling skills. You need to have tone skills. Um, and you have to juggle them seamlessly. You also have to have organizational skills. You have to be practical. You have to be a pragmatist, which is hard when telling stories to be pragmatic. But I, I would say I, I consider myself, as pretentious as this will sound, fundamentally a storyteller. So any venue I can get to do that, I want to explore and I want to go down those roads. Are you gonna Are you gonna direct again soon? You're gonna do like an episode of Dirk Gently? I'm or? not gonna do an episode of Dirk Gently, but it looks like I am gonna do a movie after Dirk Gently. Okay, too soon to say on that though. I'm not. Uh, well, it's happening, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Uh, and what was what What was interesting about it is that if you watch Death and Return of Superman, and then you watch Me Him Her, and then you watch Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, and then you watch my Ariana Grande video. What's interesting is, in some ways, stylistically, wrestling isn't wrestling is the best thing I've directed. The pacing of that short was such an intentional choice, and it's the first time I was able to go, that flowed exactly how I wanted it to. Because me and Mar have some loose nuts and bolts. Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's a, it feels like a first feature. It's a first feature. Yeah. You know, my dad's first feature was sl schlock, which was him in an ape suit in backyards in Brentwood. It's so much schlocky. It's a little bit schlock. It is a little bit schlock. Yeah. Exactly titled. Uh, my schlock is uh, is probably drunk comic book history, The Robins. If you've ever seen that. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Uh, those were, you know, before I did Death and Return, I did all of these proto Death and Returns in college. Uh, one about the Robins, one about the Nightfall storyline, one about Watchmen, and each time I would be under different strenuous circumstances. In the first one, I'm shit faced. In the second one, I'm cooking and shopping to make a caprese salad. And in the third one, I didn't sleep for three days, and then I slept for 30 minutes, and then had my girlfriend wake me up, and at like 3 a.m. after I'd like not slept for three days, and she was like, "Explain the premise of Watchmen," and so I explained the entire premise of Watchmen. How did the Caprese salad turn out? Bad. Oh. I mean, I'm I'm busy talking about. So Bane is born into prison. You know, I'm like, <laughs> and during what I'm trying to do it. He breaks out, Batman gets pneumonia and Tim Drake leaves. Uh, it, it looks like slush at the end of it because I'm, I'm a little bit more concerned trying to explain why Batman allowed a psychotic uh, murderer to become Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like we did in uh, Batman v Superman. <laughs> well, it was no, him. I have a theory about this movie now. Okay. I have a theory. Uh, so he's now, spoilers, he's now dead. So now him and Wonder Woman are alive, right? Yeah. Well, what if Batman's been Batman for a long time? Mm. He's like, I can't do this anymore. I need to be wiser. I need to change what I'm doing. And he becomes Owl Man. And Wonder, I saw this on Twitter. Wonder Woman, in honor of the death of Superman, calls herself Superwoman. And then, <laughs> in the third Justice League movie, the real Justice League shows up <laughs> to deal with the crime syndicate. And we were looking at Earth 3 movies. Oh. And, I mean, like... You remember when he crushes the guy with the car? Yeah. He loves destroying people's vehicles. He loves In, to, in this uh, Zack Snyder movie. He likes to kill people. He he's shot murder a murder Batman. He shot a guy. He had like guns in the Batwing and he shot a guy oh. on camera. Well, you know, what's so funny, what's so funny about this movie is when people go like, it's like Dark Knight Returns and no, it's, it's like, not. Or, or, but my, well, he shoots a guy in Dark Knight Returns when he has his gun to a kid's head and it's meant to be this like watershed moment of like, Batman is old and losing it. No, I, Batman just loves to kill. He just uh, loves to murder but, people. But you know, it's to be fair, I mean, the original version of Batman, back in the 30s, bang, bang. Yeah, the original version for the first few issues before they figured out what worked and then never went back to that. Yeah. Event, so I don't think that's really the one we I'll say, I, I, I don't mind so much the Dark Knight Returns Batman being like that. And I, I even like the animated series where they have the Dark Knight mm -hmm. Returns Batman. He's, he's shooting people, but then he turns and says, like, rubber bullets, I swear. Oh yeah, that yeah. was scary. Like I, I, I don't mind that so much. My trouble is more when, when you make Batman and Superman the same character, the conflict isn't interesting. What do you mean the same character? They're the same Who, guy. Who the fuck was his character? <laughs> <laughs> he did this I guess a lot. That's true. <laughs> that yes, he did that. Yeah, he's so broody. Yeah, and also you can't he's... even see that cute butt. Remember when he's making those eggs and he's got that cute butt? Hey, oh well, yo, what? I'm just glad they finally got that nerd. I hate what, what comics have always been about, bro. No, I'm being real for you. This movie is more true to the comics. 
what comics are about. Murder, frowning, beating up nerds. <laughs> you gotta get them nerds, man. What I like to see is a jack dude choking like a little scrawny nerd. You know in the comic, Lex Luthor is like this like tough dude with bald. I fixed that shit. I made him a nerd like that nerd who made fun of Man of Steel. Yo, and he like, it does, he beats all the, he beats up Is it more personal to you because the connection? Does it, do you feel like, oh, really? I'm right here? No. This is not cool. a Batman or Superman movie. You I'm mentioned this. You saw this in, you had a video about this. You said it's not a Batman movie, it's not a Superman movie, it's not a DC Comics movie. No. And I'm kind of with you on that, but my question is, what is it? Because Batman Forever isn't a Batman movie, it's like a Las Vegas stage show. Batman and it's Robin a isn't, a big, isn't a Batman movie, it's a luchador movie. And now, yeah, but what both, is this? It's a Las Vegas stage show about Batman. Okay. <laughs> and, and Batman and Robin, luchador movie, great comp. Yeah. Great, great example. Thank you. But it's still a Batman-themed luchador movie. Yes, it is. This is... What is it? I mean, this is a mess. It's Batman learning. Maybe you shouldn't always brand people. Killing's fine. Yeah, yeah, but, but maybe just branding. Don't burn them. Learn. His but, last line is about we're gonna fight. Why? Because reasons. Yeah, well, there was a lot of that. Like his powers don't always work, and so he can hear Lois falling and and drowning and all the things that happen to her, but he doesn't hear his mom. He doesn't hear a bomb going off because I don't know plot. So, mm -hmm. like, if your powers don't work the same way the whole time, like, that alone would Yeah, but that's what you're worried about? No, no, that's it's, just one of the many. I mean, like, it's many one of the many things. distractions. Do you, remember so many. When, do you remember when he's like, this is the thing that has stayed with me and will stay with me forever. It'll stay with me forever. I was watching the opening of this movie and Thomas Wayne at Gunpoint by Joe Chill being like, I'm gonna get Joe, and it's like, Isn't why that... would you? Now you got, you both got shot because you scared that mugger, yeah. and it's like that fundamentally changes the origin of Batman. And yep. it's, it's even more peculiar in a story where Batman and Superman never learn not to do that and to stop and talk for well, a second. Well, that's because yeah. not killing people is for pussies, dude. <laughs> do you want Thomas Wayne to look like some loser nerd who lets his wife get mugged? Oh, I went to the police. It's way more badass to die. It's way more <laughs> badass to die. No, dude, would Leonidas have fucking just gotten mugged? No, and every character is Leonidas, bro. You know that. It's Joseph Campbell. What's that? The hero with one face, Leonidas. That's that book he wrote. One face. All heroes work the same way, and it's beat it up pussies, dude. And if you have to die for no reason, even though Batman could have taken the spear, Wonder Woman could have taken the spear, and in fact, Wonder Woman has more tactical Why contact. Why send the guy yeah. who is weak to kryptonite to but, get the kryptonite? Because, it, because plot. Yo, Wait, because he, Superman <laughs> sucks, bro. He's a suck. boring character, and yeah. he sucks, dude. Oh, man. How do you even make a Superman movie? He's too powerful, and he's boring. <laughs> I want to make a Batman movie. But yo, but one where Batman finally kills people like we all know he should. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't That was know. my face when I left the theater. And the thing is, I didn't want to feel this way about this movie. I wanted to love it. I've wanted to see these two on the screen together since I, I was a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. And so Who that's was, that's why I was so upset about it. Yo, but Midnight it, Special is so good. Midnight Special's cool, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a cool movie. I like that one a lot. And that's, that's the best superhero uh, Warner Brothers movie out right now. And like, no one's talking about it. Did you see, uh, did you see uh, Crecia yet? Not yet, no. It's so beautifully directed. It's one Yay. of the most directed movies I've ever seen. Good. It's just a dude Something in the good house. came out of this. Just a dude in the house. Nice. One of the things that I find interesting about the, the discussions about Batman v Superman is the argument of like, well, it's true to the comics, which is a weird gray area because the comics have been around for 80 years. Yeah, it's and not true to all of them. Lots of things happen. And it goes back to Alan Moore's, this is an imaginary story, aren't they all? Um, they're all fictional. Like, they can yeah. be anything. It's the ultimate evidence of an intellectual fallacy at play. The intellectual fallacy is these characters. It's I call it the Space Jam fallacy. <laughs> um, okay, so it's that we know how to do this better. And it always starts with a good movie. In this case, the good movie is Batman Begins. Um, we know how to do this better than what, it, than what it's been. Oh, we take Batman Begins, we turn it Batman, and we turn that property into a really grounded, cool crime thriller mm. with some campy elements that are fun, but mostly it's a serious movie. Space Jam. What do we do with the Looney Tunes properties? Let's put them all in one movie. Oh, it works great. Like Michael Jordan, it's a good movie. But then the thinking changes, and it becomes all superhero movies we make should be dark and intense and gritty. Mm -hmm. And all the Looney Tunes always need to be together. The Looney Tunes existed 
for 60 years before Space Jam as separate entities. There was Pepe Le Pew cartoons. There were, there were Speedy Gonzalez cartoons. There were Roadrunner cartoons. Don't shake your hands like kind of. The well, only did... ones who ever crossed over were Donald Duck, uh, Marvin the Martian, Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, and Yosemite Sam. I mean, like, why did they leave Toontown and Quack move Busters to a universe is, is, underneath again, the Earth? Is again a a Space Jammy thing. I'm just saying, it predates Space Jam, so it had been done. Yeah, but it hadn't been done at the level of Space. Granted, Jam. and it didn't reinvent the wheels the way Space Jam did. Granted, because it reinvents the wheels a triangle. Yeah, and and you go that worked once. This is just Christopher Nolan's nightmare, ultimately coming to fruition. F two really good movies he made. And they have slowly turned into this. I don't. I feel like this is Frank Miller's nightmare. I feel like we are. When the Dark Knight Returns came out, it was a fascist persecution fantasy. It was a nightmare of our future. Right. And now, you know, it's twenty, thirty years later, and people are just like, "Well, that's the way it should be. That's the norm, right?" No, that was the nightmare. That was the that was the defiance of the status quo. What What's wrong with the way it works? Yeah, where's Spider Jerusalem when you need him? Right. <laughs> but but the thing the thing about this, I agree with you. But it's it's I agree with you even further. There's a philosophical fallacy, which is that this is the Dark Knight Returns. This has nothing to do with the Dark Knight Returns. Exactly. It's stylistically there and tonally similar, but it actually is serving an opposite point. Yeah. The complete. What point do you feel this film serves? I it, it set up a franchise. Tell everyone it's dark. Be big. Yeah. That's it. I see no thematic point other than it would suck to have superheroes. That's the same Wouldn't superheroes be a terrible thing? <laughs> Involved in a franchise, dark, big. You're describing Lexington Steel. I am. <laughs> I mean, like, I, and I do feel like I got fucked. Um, that was such a good porn star reference. I'm that was so, a good porn star. I really, I'm moving it around with porn stars from the late '90s and early 2000s. But no, it 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 just it's just frustrating, and it's 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 strange. There are little kids go to this movie, they cry. Oh, yeah, there was one in our screening. Oh, yeah? Um, what are they crying at? Sobbing. Oh, the beginning. The beginning. Just They're, Batman's parents? Yeah, and they, uh, two of them were removed from the theater when I was there. Nice. And it's, I mean, I loved Wonder Woman for the short amount of time She's she was funny. in there. She was great. But if you're going to introduce the entire Justice League through an email and with, the, with their, their symbols conveniently designed for Did them. Did you like, hello, and, I'm like, Aquaman. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Every single thing like that pissed me off because it made the movie make a lot less sense. Once Lex Luthor reveals his ultimate plan, I know it's just plot, but once he reveals his plan, it makes the entire thing seem even dumber than it was. I'm worried about Superman. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out who Batman is, spend two years gaslighting Batman into fighting my battle for me. I'll trick Batman into stealing kryptonite from me. And instead of getting all of these actual superpowered people to fight Superman who I know exist and I've been dragging down, we'll get the human to do it. And just in case that doesn't work, I'm going to rip off the ending of Superman 4 and I'm going to make a Kryptonian me hybrid that will have to fight all over the world and into space. And um, yeah, it's once and again you, magic blood. You guys did the <laughs> ultimate trick to me. What? You were, I'm here to talk about my silly little tiny release independent movie that's like a sweet romantic comedy, and you tricked me into talking about a movie I didn't enjoy, and now in the comments they're gonna be like, what was me, you make a movie better? And it's like, you, you, have, you, you have made movies better. Yeah. Chronicle well, is a I, lot no, better I didn't than say this. that. I didn't I, say I'm that. saying it, Chronicle is a damn that. good movie. I didn't say that. Example. I would never I say am. Chronicle was a good movie. I think American Ultra is a good movie, too. There you go. I like me, him, her, also. There you go. But Mr. Wright is available uh, uh, the 8th? Is it the 8th? The 8th. Yeah. Yes. And it's and it's a it's a should huge... we actually talk about Mr. Wright? Why don't you talk about I Mr. Feel like Wright? Now we don't we, have enough. We kind of skimmed over because we, we ended up segueing to me, him, her. Oh yeah, that's true. So we gave we gave a lot of play to the other film, but let's talk a little <laughs> bit. Well, let's close out on Mr. Wright. Let's give you that. Let's give you your time. Okay, Mr. Wright was the first script I wrote that got me any traction. It was the first script I I wrote that got me agents. I think it's the first script I wrote that holds up to this day that I'm proud of. It uh, when it first went out, it was really funny. It didn't sell. <laughs> the, the lead character of the movie is this woman, Martha McKay, who's kind of a mess. And they were like, nobody wants to see a movie. When, I got this from female executives and male executives. Women don't want to see a movie about a woman who's a train wreck. And I was like, really? this is five years ago. And I was, or six years ago. And they're like, I was like, oh. And they were like, they want to see movies about brides, not bridesmaids. These are... <laughs> These are real quotes. I am nauseous. These are real quotes. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, five years later, six years later, there's been a movie called Bridesmaids, 
<laughs> there's been a movie called Trainwreck. And, uh, and, you know, after Bridesmaids, Mr. Wright kind of came back. And so it was written for Sam Rockwell. And, you know, it was rid originally written as sort of a romantic comedy version of John Wick. But we had, to, we had to really, really tone down the action, although some of it's still pretty spectacular. And it's just a sweet, Sam and Anna are fantastic in it. It's a movie about limerence. It's a movie about when you meet someone and you just immediately want to spend all your time with them. And it's a movie about, you know, you meet someone, you go on a date with them and then they sleep over and maybe you don't sleep together, but then you guys just keep spending time and keep spending time and eventually, that's how like a lot of relationships start. There's very, there's not, as formalized of dating. And, and, I, and it's I an action movie about that. Well, <laughs> American Ultra is an action movie about a couple as well. Uh, it's Amer a romantic action movie as well. American, American Ultra is a movie about a couple that has problems in their relationship because both of them have secrets that neither of them are willing to face. Yeah. Uh, he thinks he's not good enough for her and he doesn't deserve her. And she thinks she's not good enough for him because she's been lying to him. And it's a movie, American Ultra, especially on the script level, was much more directly of a romance. And I feel like the film nailed a lot of that. But in the script, it really was about those emotions. And this movie, too, is just, this is, Mr. Wright is a criminally silly movie. It's very funny. The bad guys have no idea what they're doing. It just, it feels zany. Uh, Max Linus, thank you for coming on. I'm just rambling, I'm sorry. That's what we want from you. See, Mr. You're Wright, funny. it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, do any idea when Dirk Gently is going to be like next season? Probably, probably October. And I think I think Dirk Gently is going to be great. So everybody, we're on Most Crave, at Most Crave, uh, up to my knees on uh, on Twitter. My tweets are bad. <laughs> we'll be back next week with more stuff.